Okay, we're back with some basic table assessments for trainers, and we're going to be looking at the pelvis down, the lower half of the body. Great place to start with, you're going to find a lot of problems with uh, muscle imbalances and tightness, stiffness, it's going to be the hip flexors. And the way to assess this is with the Thomas test, or what's called the modified Thomas test. So, Brett, I'm going to have you just put your buttocks right at the very edge of this table, leave it a little bit more. Now we have this against the wall so it's stabilized, but if you had this sitting out and free, it just free out and you had a pretty heavy guy like Brett and you didn't stabilize and they really pushed out, it could flip over so that's something to think about. So what I want you to do is just grab, pull both knees to your chest and just go all the way back. Yep. Just all the way back. Yep. Like that. Great. Now I'm going to have you hold on to this one. So what we're doing is we're sort of flattening the back and then we're going to let the other one come down like so. And what we're looking for here is if he can get this thigh parallel to the floor. If this stays up, something like this, then it's indicative, we don't know for sure, that there could be excess tone in the primary hip flexors, the psoas muscle and the iliacus muscle. He gets that down pretty close to parallel, so I'm pretty happy with that. Then we're also looking for, is this way out to the side? Is it abducted, abducted? a little bit on him, but not bad. He's got a lot of, uh, I mean, he is the glute guy, so he's got a lot of glute strength. He's, he, this guy knows how to use his glutes. The glutes are kind of external rotator abductors as well as extensors. So he's got a little tone there, but it's nothing real pathological looking. Um, of course, I'm not diagnosing anyway, but if you were to move it in and see if it's a little stiffer, that might be indicative of, of some extra tone in those hip flexors. Then we're, second thing we're looking at is, is if he can keep this shin uh, vertical, relaxing. I have to push it a little bit. So he's got a little extra tone in the rectus muscle. You're going to find that on probably most people. Uh, someone like me who's been a sprinter and has all kinds of uh, hip flexor issues from a dysfunctional big toe, you're going to see something more like this. And then in the worst case situation, you're going to see something like this, which is just like scary type. So let's switch, grab onto this one. Flatten that back just to where it's flat, not to where you're squeezing the discs out of it, just to where it flattens. Just losing a little bit of that neutral curve. And then we're going to let this one relax. Let your head relax. Head's back. Okay. Then we're looking here, so quite parallel there. I mean, maybe you could use a little bit more, but that's uh, normally I might also have them a little more down on the table. We're not quite getting enough uh, extension here, but just for the purpose of this, uh, this will suffice. A little bit abducted. Uh, I'd say maybe a little better on this rectus muscle though, which is what we're looking for with the knee angle here. I don't have to take it very far to get it to parallel. So he does have a little bit of asymmetry there, a little bit tighter on the left. Uh, it might not be anything really significant for him. He doesn't really complain of any, any, any knee problems or anything. So, uh, but it would be something to note. It would just something that, that you'd want to take down. Okay, so from this position, let's just have you scoot back all the way on the table. So, if you're familiar at all with a, uh, just go all the way back to your head back. Just a little bit. If you're familiar at all with the functional movement screen, you know that the straight leg raise is uh, is one of the tests. So this could be a place where you would have them actively do that and kind of get an idea, or you could passively do it as well, just to see what kind of passive range you can get. 70 to 90 degrees, or basically getting this thing vertical, is considered adequate for like normal gait and running and health. If you're dealing with a dancer or a hurdler or like a gymnast, yeah, they're going to be way beyond. They're going to be way up here. But again, we're not just looking uh, at range. We're looking at asymmetries, left to right. So we want to, we want to compare to see what's going on. And then, go. Oh, as I lift this, I'm also noting to see, does this start to bend? You know, that could be indicative of some stiffness, tightness, tightness in the joint here or the muscles on the anterior down leg. We're just getting an idea here. And also, if he's got any symptoms, you got any pain or symptoms with any of this? No. So that's a pretty good way to assess hip flexion. You can also do it, go ahead and put those up there, bent knee. And this is one where you want to get your hands in the lumbar spine because you'd like to get about 110 120 degrees before that significantly flattens out. But some people, you'll get them to here, you already feel that spine flexing against your fingers, which means that they've run out of range at the hip 
and they now move they move their lumbar spine. So that's something that you you definitely want to look at is how much hip flexion they have, taking the hamstrings out of it, right? Because by straightening the knee, we're, we're going to lose some of that hip flexion because of all that tension. And if we bend it, then we should be able to gain quite a bit more. We want to look left and right. From this position here, if we get the hip to 90 degree, we get the knee to 90 degree, we can look at internal, which would be here, internal rotation and external rotation. And you're usually going to see more external rotation, anywhere from 45 to 60 degrees, maybe even 70 degrees in some people, than you're going to see internal rotation. And you're a little stiff at internal rotation here. But he, this guy does a lot of external rotation, box squats, things like that. But he has enough for function there. So that's, you know, that's not, one's well, not spectacular, but it's, it's not bad. You could also look into abduction. How far can you come out before you start moving to lumbar spine or pelvis? And there's another test here called the Faber's test or Patrick's test, which looks at adductors and is also sort of stressing the, uh, the hip joint, the sacroiliac joint, wanting to see if we can get the, you're a little tight there. And then we want to compare that to both sides. So again, I can put my fingers right under here. We're looking for the point at which his spine starts. Now, if, if, you, if you were to get a, a book and you, you wanted to practice on friends or clients uh, to get the goniometer, just to get an idea, that's not a bad idea. Just, just to get an idea of how that works. That's a little beyond what, what we're doing in this uh, video series. But that's not a bad way to learn to be able to eyeball, is to be able to learn how to use a basic goniometer. You don't need to do that, but it's not a bad idea. And then, of course, I want to compare internal and external rotation here as well and it's pretty again it's a little stiff here in uh, internal ro in, in internal rotation but it's pretty comparable to what I'm finding on the left side so it's nothing that I'm really super concerned about we come over here we're seeing if you can get this down without this really flaring out it looks okay and then last but not least we can look at ankle range of motion and just comparing with a straight knee, kind of what he can get out of that, versus with a bent knee, which is going to be looking more at soleus. With a straight knee, we're looking at gastrocnemius primarily. And then when we bend it, we're getting more into the soleus. Loosens up a little bit there. Test this side as well. And that might be a little stiffer on this angle. And then from here, we can get into inversion and eversion of the ankle, which is at the subtalar joint. Just getting an idea for that. And then there's some midfoot tests, which are a little beyond this video. But we really want to look at, if you stabilize under the first toe, this metatarsal head, can they get at least 45 degrees of extension of this great toe? Very, very important. Again, I'm looking at inversion, eversion. Eversion would be combined with pronation, kind of flattening, and inversion is when you'd be kind of getting more supinated, sort of or more of a cup type of position. And then again, I come here, I'm looking at great toe extension as well. Fantastic series of uh, table tests, doesn't take that long to do. I would definitely look into incorporating this minimally into your program.